boy. What are we doing? Are we ranking the movies of 2018 still, guys? Yes. Oh, God. Oh, no. I hope not. Oh, wow. <laughs> This is Movies Are Real. It's a movie podcast where it's a weekly movie podcast also. <laughs> uh, just kidding. This is a monthly movie podcast where we gather to discuss the movies of the month prior and what we're looking forward to the next month. I am here with Ryan Lance. Ryan, how are you? Ready to party. 100% energy all the time. That is me. a man who is not actually ready to party. <laughs> Carrie, how are you? I can never refuse a podcast. Everyone knows that. That is true. <laughs> Everyone show my business. <laughs> this is not even Ronnie Wachowski. What was his name? Wachowski. Wachowski. Can no, bring not, us back. Not, not the maker the of the Mace Matrix. No, 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 no. not Jupiter Ascendings. <laughs> Ronnie Wachowski. <clears throat> um, yes, so we're here. We're back in it. Uh, hopefully, after this, like we'll find some semblance, but we hope that you enjoyed our best of 2018 discussions. Now that we've finally done wrapped it up, we can finally hit to February. Uh, the hottest month of the movie season of 2019 so oh, yeah. far oh, yeah. out of the two months. I don't even yeah. know what happened in January. Definitely so far. Yeah. Uh, what happened in January? I don't I even remember. I can't remember no, the I'm, damn thing that uh, came out in January. It's a little bit buzz. Nope, sucks. that was February, but we talked about it on the last episode. Yeah, that's bit. true. Oh, no. I have since seen Velvet Buzzsaw. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, oh. Yeah. 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 Nope, get even in January. Glass. glass. Oh, <laughs> yeah, glass. Ooh, never mind then. Polar. Oh, oh yeah. Still my favorite movie of 2019. Wow. What the fuck That's is sweet. happening? Wow, that what is. a what a season, what a season, folks. <laughs> February is sort of, I still kind of, uh, you know, we're getting into it. It seems like March is going to have some stuff, but there is still uh, a sequel to a very good uh, movie of February 2014, uh, The Lego Movie 2. I did not see The Lego Movie 2. Uh, it has been quite a bit since the Lego Movie Two. Mm-hmm. I mean, Lego Movie One mm-hmm. uh, and Lego also, Movie Two. Honestly, yes, yes it's, we're recording this in March. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we, I said it on the last episode that I feel kind of low on Lego Movie energy. Uh, Lego, I wasn't a fan of the Lego Batman movie. I think I was the only one though. Um, so yeah, how did you guys feel about Lego Movie Two? For me, it's like does it feel like necessary? It feels like it's been such a long ass time. I mean, there was so much in between because like, there was Lego Movie, Ninjago, was the Ninjago and Batman, which came out in the same year. Yeah, they yeah, did. Which was very interesting. It's weird that they went with Ninjago. I know that's like popular, like a kids cartoon. I assume it's popular for the like the kids well, love it. Well, there's but a, I don't know. it's a Cartoon Network show. Oh, Lego it's, okay. Ninjago, yeah. Gotcha. But like, I don't think the actual show is voiced by like actors. Let's we'll see know, how that movie did. Because I know freaking. Um, Dave Franco voiced one of the people nice. in the Ni- Lego Ninjago movie. You know, the best Franco, which isn't even a hot take. That's just like the fact. Not a lot of work up for that man. I haven't no, seen a lot for of someone stuff. who's very talented. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, we're not talking about the Lego Ninjago movie. We're talking about the Lego movie 2, the second part. Carrie, what'd you, <laughs> what'd you, like, what'd you think about this one? Um, I don't remember... A lot of it. So yeah. that's not a great sign. Yeah. But uh I don't know. I felt like some of the stuff it did was interesting, but I felt like it wasn't nearly as impactful mm-hmm. as the first one, and I don't think it really ever had a chance of being no, nearly true. as impactful as the first one. Like it's that's what also helps that we went into that movie with like no expectations and we were pretty blown away. If anything yeah. we went with negative expectations. Yeah. And I was like, Oh god. Ooh. It's very good. And I think a lot of the novelty of seeing the the Lego movie concept realized for the first time mm-hmm. is in that. Um, God, Will Arnett's Batman is just, I can't you stand like it. I'm sorry. <laughs> eh. um, is there too much Will Arnett in like the universe right now? I think he's, He has a lot of shows. He has a him. lot of shows. I'm fine with the BoJack because that feels like, that's like hardly, I mean, it's a character, but it's yeah. the most like fucking realist character. Yeah. Also, I'm not, that, that show depresses me, so I don't like to watch it. Often. That sort of presses me. That's why I love to watch. Uh, okay, that's weird. That's what I always hear from people. It's like, why? Oh, whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, is it funny? Obviously, uh, Phil yeah. Lord and Chris Miller are not involved with this one. They were sort of involved with the Lego Batman movie, mm-hmm. um, but not involved with this one. So was it funny? Yeah. Like obviously, it, it it never really matched that first one. And you know, Carrie made a good point of it doesn't really. The first Lego movie has like that that those that moment and you're like oh and like it all kind of comes together and this like it expands on that pretty early on and it tries to do more stuff with that to try to mm-hmm. 
try to like one up itself in a way without right. like going overboard because you can't really like there's not like a third layer to it it's more of just like right. expanding like what was already there and it does like a fairly decent job of that are you talking about the fact that they that like they kind of realize that they're sort of toys or? yeah okay it's sort yeah because in this one it's you know it's set in the set in the future uh six years it's all apocalyptic and um, some alien invaders come down to a uh, post. Were they still the Duplo bit. guys? Yeah. No, oh, that well, was just it, a well, bit. It huh? was. It was some Duplo guys, but that ended up not being it. But it, what happened was the Duplo guys destroyed everything. It became Mad Max world. You know, uh, post-apocalyptic. Uh, because in the real world, it's the kids taking apart all the, the city and the stuff mm-hmm. that the dad had uh, built, playing with it, and moving it all around, and stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, like, six years in the future, you know, it's not really uh, the Duplo guys. It's just um, these other uh, kind of more different toys that are, um, well, not Oh, toys, they're not Lego. necessarily Lego or what? No, they're Legos. They're uh, just, they just have a different vibe. Gotcha. A different vibe. And, like, classic set? There's, no, it's, like, Lego Friends. Oh, Lego Friends. Yeah, that didn't work out, did it? No, I did it. It didn't. No. It didn't. They got. No, they were, I was, know they was, were harshly yeah. scrutinized, but I know yeah. that worked out for they're, them. They're so. still a thing. No, yeah, I, I'm pretty Which sure is, it's still a thing. They are still a thing, but it's still a very weird. I just a thing. I think that's a thing that they are like. Listen, people buy this, but we can't be out here like yeah. it's a bad PR look. But yeah, exactly. It keeps on it. Exactly. Um. So all right. Um. And it's it's, uh, you know, the trailers kind of do do enough. Um, Wild Style. That's her name, right? Wild Style. Yeah. Wild Style. Gets, yes. Goes up with Elizabeth aliens, Banks. and uh, Chris Pratt needs to. Everyone's go favorite. Him. He keeps getting funnier and more lovable every year. <laughs> every film role, Chris Pratt. Yeah. He's never did anything problematic. No, nope, he's not like the most like white toast motherfucker in the world now. You know, he, people think he should be Batman. No, oh, wow. want something That's he just said and put opinion. into the world. Oh boy. I mean, if Will Arnett can do it. That's Karen, true. Have you seen that? Mm-mm. He like tweeted like apparently people want me to be Batman, but like no one ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> And people were like, what? No. no who said that? Said that? Exactly. That's really funny. Yeah, so yeah, that's no, where that comes that. from. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it maintains a lot of the, the humor. There's a lot more, like, music to it. Mm-hmm. Mm. I was just going to say, I really like they do a, a not a villain song mm-hmm. where Tiffany Haddish as the, oh, hey. the queen of the, the new world that they get taken to by the mm-hmm. aliens. Her song is great. I listen mm-hmm. to it a whole lot. Okay, I might listen to it. Lots of there. catchy music. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there any uh, it feels like it's weird though because like the first one had like that long song and that was it this is this this feels like a music this is like feels like a kid's like music a lot of part a lot of times and that's interesting yeah it was cool. like all the music is cool it's just i wasn't huh. expecting I that kind of like build to it mm. which like i guess you would have to because like you know it's trying to one-up itself so it's like let's yeah. do like a fun villain song let's do the song that one this song's gonna get stuck, stuck inside, inside your head. This song's gonna get stuck inside your now, head. I didn't like that song at first, but then but like, it got I, stuck inside your head. It did get stuck inside my head, but I was like, <laughs> no, actually, it's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, it's it's what you imagine going in. It's not gonna like blow anything away. No, yeah. But it's a uh, fun time, and it's uh, well animated, mm-hmm. and I really liked the credits. The credits were cool, and the credit oh, yeah. song that was playing over the credits. Well, they were like, wasn't it the bit? They were like reading all the credits. It was. It was the lonely. Like, it was the lo- for the credits. It was the lonely island guys, and they yeah. were singing a song about why people are staying for the credits and how weird that is. <laughs> that sounds like a lonely island. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, they and, say, they, and they wrote uh, everything was awesome. Yeah, they said they wrote everything was awesome. With, so uh, that's why it's so awesome. I know. And, right? Oh my god, what the the two female duo pop? I forget their name. They sang. Uh, oh man, it's gonna come to me eventually. I know it's killing you're talking me. About. Yeah, I 100 know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, uh, but anyways, so yeah, does it is it a conclusive end or do they leave it up like, hey, we're gonna be back for the third Lego movie? Uh no, I feel like it kind of. <laughs> wraps up what it's trying to do because it really completes the whole the whole idea of like his family right of like the kid's family oh right right 
And I don't know what else you can do with that without like having his the next... grandma comes over. I mean, I would say the same thing about <laughs> Toy Story three though. Yeah, I think I think that would probably be the only way you could do a third one of these if it was a Toy Story three style. Mm -hmm. If he basically became Will Ferrell. Oh right. <laughs> yeah, the CGI the little, young Will little, Ferrell. The little, the little Chris Pratt Lego comes up to him and he's like, "Chris Pratt, is that you?" And then it's like Christopher Robin, but it's with his oh. Lego oh, man. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's so. Enough. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's well animated. Music's great, but you know, it's not. It, I feel it like a Lego Movie Two was necessary to be out mm -hmm. there in the world. Mm -hmm. um, it may be like a year or two, a little late, but you know, I think we can move on now as a society. I think so. <laughs> make a Bionicle movie. We make the Bionicles. Oh, there was no Bionicle references. That's Bullshit. that's a shame. That's I know, a big right? shame. Um, Anyways, Happy Death Day to You is another movie on this list that came out in February. I was a huge fan of the first one, but I did not find the time to watch Happy Death Day to You. And I remain confused as to why they made a sequel to Happy Death Day. You and me both. If I saw uh, Ryan, <laughs> you're not a fan of this film. No. Carrie, you thought it was all right. I thought it was okay. It was fun. I laughed a bunch. Mm -hmm. So, like, the thing is, like, I'm not a big... I know you're big on Happy Death Day. I like it a whole lot. I thought it was fine. That's fair. Yeah, and then I saw this, and I was like, mm, I hate this. <laughs> it's a very, I don't know. So the end of Happy know. Death Day, the end of Happy Death Day, got like real and like sentimental, and like uh, like sort of like explore this character. It's weird. Like, do they do more with that in Happy Death there's Day? There's a lot of. There's they certainly try. Oh, okay. I, I feel like it was pretty successful at some parts with the. They go into into Tree more and her relationship with her mom and they explore it more. And I feel like it does a decent job of being sentimental at parts. Mm -hmm. But. I mean, if, yeah. If you're if you're not if you're not into the movie from the beginning, it's just gonna go. Okay. It's not gonna not gonna affect you in any way. And that, the, I understand that. Is but. the fact that the gimmick is still happening annoying? It's it's silly, like it's explained yeah. in a silly, cheesy way, and I think that it's that explained works. in a stupid, but it's, dumb, idiot. Okay, way. Okay, if you're an <laughs> asshole, it's just, it's fun and stupid. <laughs> it's not trying to be serious. No, I know the movie is very much clear that it's not trying to be serious. And Ryan is like, I hate it anyway. <laughs> I do, I really do. Okay. So you're not amused by it, Ryan? No. Uh, okay, gotcha. No, like the movie begins with. You know, you see in the trailer, um, uh, is his name also Ryan, the, the other guy? Probably. Probably. He, he, he's a douchebag, so his <laughs> name's probably Ryan. I have no idea. Uh, so he, like, starts getting stuck in the loop, and then they find yeah, out the, what's... The, and the they, roommate of Tree's boyfriend. Who oh, the guy walks in. Yes. On the, yeah. yeah. He gets stuck in the loop, and then they find out what causes the loop, and, that, and then some events happen that are... Um, stupid and nonsensical and are never brought up again after the conclusion of everything. Even though there's a lot of weird ramifications to what the hell happened. Anyways, and then Tree gets stuck back in the loop, which oh, is frustrating because, you know, she had her arc. And when you think about the context of these movies, like this movie takes place the next day afterwards. And like she just got out of like a loop of like, like yeah, that's the thing days. also I was worried about. And then she has another that's... arc, which is why I'm like, I don't care. Like, she learned her lesson. It's very much like... And, like, I know that there's there was the one thing that they explored with her, but I just didn't care because I didn't understand huh. who this person was anymore because she just, like, was like, I'm going to stop being a, like, stereotypical, like, bleh, 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 girl. <laughs> And now I have this with my dumb. You're really sanctifying your point over there. Yeah, it's, it's so dumb. Well, but I will say that it is a bummer that it is the, like a whole 24 hours after. Yeah. Because it really did feel like this character went through an arc and it was like yeah. exhausting to get there. Yeah. But it felt good. And then, it, yeah, again, I've brought it up it. multiple times this podcast and I think I'm the only person. Have you guys seen Alien 2 and 3? I've seen the second I've, one. I've seen Alien 2. I've not okay, seen so like the thing is, like Alien 3 starts, you know, she gets off. Oh, I the, know what happens. Yeah, she gets off the thing in 2, yeah. right, with, uh, what's her, Newt? With Newt, Newt yeah. yeah, and like, oh, we're all going to be happy, whatever. And the movie starts like, they all died. You're the only one alive. There's an alien on it again, and you're all dead. They're all, all those mm -hmm. characters you like, they're all dead, and you're on this prison planet, and everything sucks. Mm -hmm. It's like you have this, like, good happy ending, 
and it's just you come back like, oh, everything's shit again, Ripley. Sorry. <laughs> and it feels like that. Like, they, you yeah. had your, like, happy thing, and no, everything's back to shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck. Gotta find a dog alien. God damn it. Uh, getting too old for this shit. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, again, I'm, I'm bummed I wasn't able to see it. Uh, I'll watch it eventually. And yeah. it's more of, like, it... It, it goes away from the horror more. Like this is yeah. not a horror. No. Like this is not a horror movie. It's it's more of a dark comedy, if anything. Yeah. Mm. And it like, sort of delves into sci-fi a bit. Like not well, but it, like it's a like, goofy, like think of an episode of Rick and Morty. <clears throat> Ugh. Yeah. Well, now you made me hate the movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like this. Like when watching them, I was like, this is the most Rick and Morty ass shit. Well, it ever. sounds like, regardless, it seems like it's teetering on the edge, and for you, it completely fell over. Oh, yeah. For Gary, it's like, no, it's still, it's all right. I had fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it, regardless, it seems like they were. It was still a challenge that they were like, you know, let's make another one of these. I think regardless, they were gonna have a steep mountain to climb. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm regardless, interested. they were gonna make a lot of money off of right. it. So, because um, it's a very I, I cheap think, kind of movie to make. Yeah. but you could tell that everyone still like was trying and cared. Like yeah. the, the the roommate guy, kind of. I never really cared about him. No. He was just kind of. Yeah, the... He never did great, but I think that the main girl, uh, Jessica Rothy, I think is how you say her name. Yeah, I, I loved her a lot. She's in good. The movie. I think she has a lot of charisma. Big fan. Happy Death Day one. Big yeah. big fan. But yeah. Yeah, like it, like it is interesting, like seeing like the side characters from the first one, like actually do more in this well, one. Sure, which it that's always fun when you know it makes it feel like the people making it had like a vision. I mean, they, these people making this, they clearly did it. They just, I they I don't know. With them. Sure. I don't think I don't think they wrote. Ha- I like, still feel I like Heavy Death Day idea. One is a well-made movie where people. Yeah, but have, I don't yeah. think when they made it, they had like a vision. Oh yeah, sure. No, that's no, what, no, that's yeah, what I'm saying. But I think given what, given in the context of like, the characters, I sure. think that's fine, especially the, like the supporting cast, because um, like pretty much, I think everyone from the first one's back, like every single one, even like the people that like she would just walk down the street and. Yeah, right. Like the people, like, she wakes up in the same day and, again, yeah. and all the the save the play. A simple no would have been. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's all the back. same stuff, and there's more bits with that. Um, I hated that montage. I really hated. That it very montage. much feels. It, funny. it very much feels. <laughs> that's a very good Paramore song. But it's funny. It, it 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 was funny at first, and then it got bad, and then that last shot was. very... Very, very clearly a green screen. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but like it felt so like it like I could do a better job like having a still image and like put pull, like pull, pulling it down in Photoshop myself with a mouse. Mm. I had it was. One. Yeah, and, and you know what? That's I totally get that. <laughs> I just as someone who has seen Rick and Morty and knows Ugh. what true uh, sci-fi um, art right. is. Nope. Um. That's, this movie's that's art? sarcasm. Uh, okay. <laughs> art. Art. Uh, yeah, I don't like this movie at all. Uh, if you do, that's cool. I don't care. Great work, Ryan. No, but yeah, I, I'm interested to see it. For me, yeah. it very much feels like the weird offshoot that people forget. Because I feel like every movie series has like a, you know, like a weird sequel or a thing that like that didn't need to happen, but mm-hmm. like it's there if you still want more. Um, which is how I feel about Ninja Turtles 3, uh, which is a very, I assume it's a very uh, smart analysis. It makes complete sense there. Um, oh, fuck. Okay. I had to talk about wrestling. Oh, oh exciting. Okay. So, Fighting With My Family is on is a movie that came out in February. People fucking like this movie a whole lot. What the really? fuck? I was not expecting this at all. And they are real all. wrestling fans, right? No. I liked the way the poster looked. <laughs> I think it's still sitting in a 93. People like this movie a whole fucking lot. It It is the most successful WWE films movie ever. It did very well, critically and commercially. So what's the George take? So it's it's a weird thing. So sucks. I mentioned it last time. This is the movie based. It's like a it's a biopic. 92 percent. Yeah, uh, it is a biopic. Sort of a Bohemian Rhapsody style. Oh, don't say that. Yeah, and that's why I said, like, guys, if you, uh, man, this wrestling movie might have a chance at an Oscar. I don't know, guys, now, because this seems way better. Um, and anyway, so yes. Okay, first off, you know who wrote and directed this movie? Stephen Merchant. Yeah, Stephen Merchant. Yes. Yeah, they I put wrote, his name I all wrote, over the I place. The okay. Um, 
So anyways. Which you didn't read. That's yes, true. that's true. That's, that is my bad. So this, like I said, this is the story of Soraya Knight, also known as WWE Superstar Paige. Um, so my thing going in is like, I wasn't sure how you tell this story. Um, I, I said it in the earlier podcast, as a wrestling fan, I can't, I left when she became a big deal. Uh, and she came in sort of like, oh, women's wrestling can be a, a real good thing. Uh, and this movie kind of, and then the, the name she gave it away. It is a more of a focus of a family. It's, it's more about this family. It's more about uh, a brother and sister who had the exact same dream and the sister got it, but the brother didn't mm-hmm. and he won't fucking give it up. Um, and that's what it's about. And it's also about this, with a lot of wrestlers, it's tells us, well, one, it tells you about what the ins and outs about wrestling. And from what I've told, heard, talked to people who love this movie, they liked it a lot because it gave them a peek of like how wrestling works. Uh, it can still blows my mind that people are like, oh, you guys do understand that it's scripted? I was like, yeah, motherfucker, I know that it's scripted, <laughs> but they don't know exactly how, like, okay, here's how. The, the 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 how you make a match here's like why you have a champion here's why you have a bad guy here's how you get that bad guy over and here's the, how the business works people really found that interesting i obviously already knew that but it was cool to see them put on the screen but the stuff about her accomplishments as a wrestler that stuff is like eh, a little hazy like some stuff is like like i mentioned that there's there's a butterfly belt the wrestlers used to be called the female wrestlers used to be called divas that is never addressed. They never explain, like, why that was a thing. They never explain how Paige was, like, a real-ass fucking wrestler who was given 20-minute matches in a time where the women were given 90 seconds before the main event and were called bathroom breaks. Oh, they don't okay. talk to that at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're just like, oh, she got into the thing. She got the butterfly belt. And that's how the movie ends. And that's what I was like, how is this movie going to end? Because right now, Paige is retired because she was forced to retire because she got an injury. Um... Well, actually, when she has an injury that she, pretty much if she wrestles, she's going to have a fucking seizure that will paralyze her forever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, oh, maybe that's you end the movie. I was like, okay, no. Well, there was also, she also had a huge thing where a bunch of, like, uh, private photographs and videos of her leaked out there. And it was a huge fucking bad, bad deal for her. I was like, okay, well, maybe that'll be a moment in the film. But I also understand maybe she doesn't want to talk about that part because it was fucking awful. But that's not addressed either. It's like, okay, well, are you going to address the fact that she was the first, like, uh, like, developmental, like, women's champion? And, like, no, that's not addressed either. She gets the butterfly belt. That's the end. All the stuff with the wrestling is glossed over. And for me, that doesn't do anything. But the family stuff, the stuff with, uh, like, all, I think all the supporting cast here does a great job of telling a story of a family who, like, fucking, you know, is, they're little, they're not your average fucking family. Um... But for me, it was like, this feels a little too, like, in the mold of a biopic. Mm-hmm. Like, from everything at top to bottom that I mentioned, like, the stuff that, like, I'm sure, I haven't seen Bohemian Rhapsody, but I'm sure, it, like, it, it, it's, uh, it paints with a brush that's not as good, but yeah, it looks like the picture. That's yeah. the picture there. I, I can, yeah, it, you know, it could be more detailed, but yeah, that's the picture. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what it very much felt like to me. Um, and people like that a lot, and that's cool. I think Florence Pugh does a great job. Uh, she's a lot shorter than actual Paige, which is uh, nothing against either, but it's like, it's like, man, like, I don't, cynically knowing this this company, they would not have hired her because uh, they're big dealing on height. But regardless, I think she does a fantastic job. Um, it's, yeah, and it also, it, it made sense because, you know, it goes through, like, she gets hired, but you have to go through developmental before you get on the actual TV show. And the stuff, I think that's like the main. Any sports movie, it's like, oh, you gotta, you're not gonna make it, kid. Fucking Vince Vaughn is in this fucking movie. <laughs> Actually, that's the other thing. Vince Vaughn in WWE, there is one guy who decides if you make it or not, and that's Vince Vaughn. Uh, that's and, the worst case. Scenario. Yeah, and I was like, sure, and it's like fucking. Uh, the Rock calls him a porn star because he makes you look good. And I was like, I don't know what that means <laughs> at all, Rock. Uh, but yeah, he plays like like the guy. He's like, he never made it, and so he's got a. Fu- he's all like curmudgeon, and he's all like, you're not gonna make it either, kid. Like all this like sports stuff is very cliche. Um, but I really do think it's like the supporting cast who plays uh, her family. Uh, Nick Frost is great. Lena Headey is great. Uh, is the the brother's not here, but he's also very, very good. Uh, and Rock is just here being like, 
He's not even being The Rock, the character. He's being Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the Instagram character. He's all like, hey, guys, you know what's really great? I'm here to inspire you. I'm excited. We're going to work out. We're going to kill it, guys. I'm so excited. He does one wrestling promo in, in The Rock character, and it's fantastic, but that's in all the trailers. Um, yeah, I think it, it's fine. I, it's, I don't know. I was confused who it was for when I saw it, but clearly people who, like, um, you know, just want a good wrestle, like a st sports story, feel good sports story, liked it. And... Yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, yeah, I was kind of disappointed by the end of it. Because most of the good reviews, most people outside of the wrestling world like, this movie's great. I was like, oh, I'm excited. But I was like, ah, it's 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 a biopic, paint by the numbers. Like, yep, yep, yep. like yeah, they don't, take, they don't talk about like a lot of like the stuff that wasn't probably the best or like the, yeah, it could have been better. But yeah, that's how I feel about fighting with my family. I'm still confused that people liked it as much as they did. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm still I, confused about wrestling, but I'm glad that uh, yeah, they touch you. You like, understand it. I do. Uh, you know, they talk about uh, you know a, a, a potato, a receipt. Uh, they talk about a gimmick. They talk about uh, a shoot. Okay. Uh, uh, talk about a gig. All right. Which is when you ha it's the razor blade that the referee carries, and when no one's looking, they get <laughs> your forehead and you start bleeding. That doesn't seem. Ethical? Uh, uh, oh well, not, they don't do it anymore. Okay. Uh, but they used to. They used to keep it in their teeth. Uh, they weren't sugar and they get in there. Yeah, that's good times. Good times. That is horrifying. Uh huh. And then you sell it. You'd be like, Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> good times wrestling. Uh, speaking of good times, uh, let me tell you about this little dragon who doesn't have any teeth. His teeth are all tiny, but he's got a heart of gold. Uh, how to train your dragon? They made a third one. The hidden world. It's been a hot minute since the second. What is it? Like four years, right? Uh, I think I remember seeing Lego Movie and How to Train Your Dragon 2 the same year. That but I think right. I think it was four years ago. I'm going to look it up. But yeah. Because DreamWorks was busy with their boss, baby. Don't right. They, this they, is, they, they take a lot time. of people paint, like, a lot of see like, this is, like, the, the high-quality DreamWorks stuff. Right. Uh, at least the stuff that's not in your face. But I, I just, I've always found it to be sort of... Fine. Yeah. I still Who saw this one here? I saw these it. movies. Yeah. Is this the first one you saw, or have you seen a couple? No, I've seen the other two, but I don't remember them very much. But yeah, neither, neither do I. But you know, it, you don't really need them to watch this one. But I don't know that this one would be interesting enough on its own. But it's a pretty good movie. The my main takeaway is it was gorgeous. Yeah. The animation was amazing mm. i loved it like there's a part where the where toothless is drawing a picture in some wet sand with a stick and just the sand the way the sand is animated when he's moving it pushing it around i was like this is the best thing i've ever this is gorgeous it's amazing but it's a pretty it's a pretty i don't know the story didn't do much for me it's that they bring all the dragons back to their their home island and uh, they're they're getting into where there's too many dragons, so they gotta they gotta they gotta move. They gotta go somewhere else, maybe. But they've been there for a long time. But then there's this bad guy who wants to make a dragon army or something, mm. and he's like taking dragons and feeding them. We their gotta own... weaponize. Them. Yeah, he's feeding them their own poison until they're loyal to him, and then. But toothless is this supposedly extinct breed of dragon that's the alpha that all the dragons listen to and, and the, then there's a lady there's a lady version of that who is uh, uh owned by the bad guy and he like lets her out as bait to try and get toothless back with him and then there's this legendary hidden world that uh hiccup's dad had always told him about where it's just dragons so they're thinking maybe we can move our village there to the to the dragon world and but mainly it's just them trying to safely move their home to another place where they can thrive and not be attacked by this dragon hoarding bad guy and then there's themes of hiccup having to uh part ways with toothless and like growing up a bit and he's he doesn't want to be the chief cuz he's is he still a kid in this one? No, he's, I would say, like, 18 or 19. They oh, probably okay. say explicitly. Does he I have a beard? Does he have he's a... got stubble. Oh, he's got stubble. Okay, gotcha. But, uh, 
But yeah, I mean, it, the story isn't the strongest, but there's some scenes that I felt were pretty impactful, even as someone who doesn't really hold the first two movies. Like, Chad? they're good, but, like, yeah. I never cared about them that much. But the, the ending of this was still pretty affecting. Very so. pretty. It's so Shout pretty. out to Jay getting a paycheck. I haven't yeah. had Jay Burchell <laughs> in fucking forever. Yeah, um, and Kate Blanchett's in it. Kate Blanchett's in it. Is she a mm. dragon? <laughs> no, uh, she's Hiccup's mom. Uh, okay, gotcha. Right. Oh yeah, I knew that. I knew that. Um, but yeah, how to train your dragon, the hidden world. I mean, it's also like the DreamWorks stuff. It's weird. Even if I was a kid, I'd be very confused because, like, they have the TV series for like every fucking franchise mm-hmm. that they have a movie for. It's like, oh well, now we're gonna have like the the big thing apart from the Netflix TV show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know how they balance that at all. Um, I mean, there's like, <clears throat> I know like the, the like, there's that time gap. So I assume with whatever happened that TV show took place in that gap. Okay. Because like he's an adult now. Mm, but of course mm. that means the events of the show can't be meaningful to the movies. Right. So like fucking Clone Wars and yeah, Star Wars. It's weird. It's weird. Um, it's not like the first season of Pokemon because exactly. clearly Mewtwo's like, who the fuck is that guy exactly. over there? And then they do the movie. It's like, oh, this makes sense. Yeah. And then the they forget one... everything. So it's yeah, fine. it's fine. It's, it's great. Fine. It's, it's storytelling. Movie. Yeah. Um, Carrie gets it. <clears throat> I know about Mewtwo. Mm-hmm. Hulu's Into the Dark continues Ooh. to truck. Uh, keeps on going. Uh, down. Da- What's this new one, Ryan? Uh, the Valentine's Day one was called Down. Okay. Right. Um, directed by uh, Daniel Stram. He made such other films. I need to catch as... up with this. I had it just up. Uh, the Last Exorcism. The oh, Last Exorcism. So, the last one. The last one. Is so. that the found footage movie? Uh, probably. The one that ends with the big creature or something? I don't know. Apparently oh, 2010. You, yes, this is that Apparently one. you want to watch it on Letterboxd. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it or not. I think, really? I think someone told me that the ending was hilarious, and I just yes, watched the Yes, I ending. remember the ending now. It's certainly <laughs> memorable. Um, uh, but Down takes place. It's their Valentine's Day movie. Um, it takes place in this um, office building, kind of like a law financial firm type of dealie, all like fancy. And a woman is working overnight. Um, she's p- taking a plane, uh, plane, a uh, plane ticket down, uh, to meet, um, an ex-boyfriend or maybe a boyfriend that, um, you know, it's not, it's, it's a complicated relationship essentially. Um, so she's taking the elevator down from her floor down. Um, a new guy, uh, is also there. He was staying late cause he was, uh, new and trying to get a hand on things. Uh, so they both meet in the elevator and the elevator, uh, gets stuck basically, and they are trapped in this elevator at night, uh, and for whatever reason, no one seems to be there to be able to get them out of the elevator. Mm-hmm. So a very typical kind of setup. Yes. But I would say... Not revisited since uh, Devil by not Max Shyamalan. Re- Although... Uh, I mean, there was that 9-11 movie with oh, Charlie Sheen in it where right. all those people were stuck in an elevator on 9-11. But, but 9-11 wasn't also happening at the same time. This was just they were in the elevator. Oh, I thought you were talking about in the 9-11 movie. I was like, yes, the whole thing was actually happening. I don't know about that. <laughs> but essentially, uh, this movie is, you know, they're, they're both stuck in this elevator. They try to get out. They get to know each other. Uh, things get revealed. For what it does in terms of, you know, being trapped in this confined space, it it explores that pretty well. You know, there's rarely scenes where they're not in the elevator. Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't ever feel like, oh, just get out of the fucking elevator, you know? <laughs> that's how it felt like during Devil. I was like, oh my god. This that sounds is, a lot of things during Devil. Stu- <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, this isn't like a great film. It, it's decent. But it's better than Devil. It is better than Devil, but mm-hmm. so is there like we go. hot shit on a Tuesday <laughs> afternoon. Dang. Uh... <laughs> I will say the twist in Down is incredibly obvious. Oh. Like, like you can like just think of like what it is like to be a woman, and you can assume what the twist is. Hmm. Hmm. I actually want to see this, so I'll just yeah. Yeah, hmm. but even if you can't tell, like there's a there's enough context. Where like, okay, this is this she is. murders him. Well. <laughs> 
there there's enough context in the first like in this in the setup where it's like all right i know this is good oh, and see. even like when the twist happens it's like okay this is this is gross oh. basically oh, but gross in a way that like it's just like the way life is so it's like oh life is gross i right. hate I hate mm. life. Life is awful. Cool. But it's also predictable and, you know, so it doesn't feel like as impactful and definitely feel like it's being told from a, a male perspective. Of so it. not the best ending. Not, well, the ending's good in a way that, like, everything mostly resolves in, like, a happy ending kind of sense. But, you know, it's not, it's not perfect. It's okay. I think for, like, a... An online stream. I see a lot of these into the dark movies. I feel that way. Short, shortish film. It's pretty solid, you know. I that's why that's why I like these into the dark movies. Just because you know, every once in a while you'll come across a puka, a, a, puka. a, a puka, or a down, and you're like, you know what? It's it's really fun having like <clears throat> every month being like this new weird horror movie. That one about the uh, daughter and the dad and the daughter had... Is it agoraphobia when you don't want to go outside? Yeah. yeah. Agoraphobia is like a fear of large Ye- spaces and not being in control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one. That one was not good. I didn't like that one at all. I've bad. only seen Puka and the New Year's one. Yeah, that one was all right. It was a little confusing, but it was a little far-fetched, but it was fine. I know in the future there's a few Into the Dark ones that uh, have right. some pretty good directors, so I'm pretty Ooh. excited. Um, but yeah, Down is pretty solid, uh, f- fun enough, uh, kind of dumb in a lot of parts, mm. but you know, what, can, what What do you expect from this shitty franchise <laughs> of films? It, I feel like it's going to jog memories for me, because I was once trapped in an elevator. Ooh, I was with my sister. We thought we were going to die, but we How figured old? we would, I was probably... Seven. Oh, okay. I was oh. I was young, and my sister's five years older than me. So, but we were like, we're not gonna die because we have a pack of juicy fruit. So we were fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> we were in there for like maybe thirty minutes. It's pretty traumatizing. <laughs> I know. I, I know. You don't have to congratulate me now. Mm. I know I'm pretty strong. Well, that's all for February. Um, you know, it was a fine month. It sounds like. Um, I got to watch a wrestling thing, and I was kind of it was I walked out disappointed, honestly. Uh, I got to listen to Paige's entrance music in a movie theater. That was cool, though. Mm. Um, yeah. March! You know, obviously we're in March and we're recording this. There's no reason to have uh, a kayfabe, as we say, in the mm-hmm. wrestling business. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's no reason to play around. It's just fucking March. Yeah. Uh, so, March. you know, we're not going to talk about Captain Marvel, even though I haven't seen it yet, but y'all have seen it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um... So, Captain Marvel, oh, we know that Ryan's, uh, it was a movie that Ryan was very much looking forward to for many years. Many years. Uh, it was delayed twice. Once for an Ant-Man sequel. That's true. <laughs> that's fucking bullshit. That was a good movie, though. That was a good movie. <laughs> it doesn't deserve to push back the new thing for a fucking Ant-Man I, you know, you gotta, I'm still pissed. I've seen both and I'm still pissed. You know what? You gotta let a new talent shine. You know what I'm saying? New talent. Yeah, Ant Man, everyone's favorite. No, uh, it's a sequel with literally everyone returning. Tyler Perry's Medea Family Funeral. Who died? Uh, no clue. Medea? No, I think that'd be a bigger deal. <laughs> what is though? I saw. I the think ther- there'd be a lot of headlines like, "Oh, Tyler Perry's killing Medea." <laughs> I, I saw the Tyler Perry movie on the list, and I was like, well, we gotta put it on. It has, we gotta make a funny there, goof about there's it. There's a Tyler Perry movie on every other episode yeah. of this podcast. <laughs> also, I don't feel like, like, what's the goof, really? Like, they keep making them? They're not for us? Yes. It's, um, it seems like it'd be like a death at a funeral kind of movie. Uh, Judging by the one poster I saw when uh-huh. we were going to see Captain Marvel. The and I was like, oh, why? Didn't Tyler? you say something about how it's supposed to be the last... Last Medea movie or something? Or I would have no yeah, idea. I, don't know. I would have Someone no told idea. me something like that. And I think every time I you, highly doubt. And every that time we come up with a Tyler Perry movie, I always say Diary of a Mad Black Woman was a great movie. And then like, all right, that's it. Uh, let's see. Tyler Perry. <laughs> Greta. <laughs> yeah, Greta. Uh, and Greta. Chloe oh. Grace Mortez. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, basically, the plot of this one is I haven't seen it yet. I, I would like to, but I don't know if it's showing anywhere. Uh, it was showing it was at for the a bit. Midtown Alamo. But not anymore. Oh, I refuse to go to Midtown. <laughs> well, I think it was show. It might have been showing at both. I don't remember. 
But, but uh, essentially, it's this woman. Uh, she leaves a purse on like a train, and Chloe Grace Moretz, being uh, the wonderful, kind woman she is, <laughs> um, returns it to her, and she develops a friendship uh, with this woman, Greta. And things get fucky. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, I don't know. No, they do. <laughs> they get they get very is fucky. That one girl in this. Uh, oh yeah, Micah Monroe yay. is in it. Yay. Yeah. Mm. They're back after working together in the, the fifth wave. One of like the Ooh. second episode of this podcast, I believe. Ooh. What a good movie. <laughs> what was that the first was. episode? I think that was the first episode. Was it the first episode? Oh, man, it all comes together. No. Now it had to be the second. It's second yeah, or third. The first episode was like the forest <clears throat> and It was the The Boy. Oh man. man. What a time. Micah, man, I, I was like, who, oh, yeah, that's who that is. Mm-hmm. Um, what has Micah Monroe has been since after Independence Day? Not a lot. Probably not. You know what? She picks her roles. She, <laughs> like, I know Independence Day is going to work out, and I know Greta's going to work out. It feels out. like a lot of your Asian being like, this will be great for your career. It turns out, not great. Mm-hmm. This director directed The Crying Game. That's an okay movie. Mm. Um, mm. And The Piano Teacher. Um, reviews for, for uh, Greta were pretty solid, so I'm interested in seeing it. I mm-hmm. can definitely catch it this year. Uh, Gaspar Noe is back. He's back and he's horny uh, and weird, <laughs> as he usually is. Uh, climax. Uh, if the movie before that were like the logo was like made out of cum, uh, wasn't horny enough, this next movie is called Climax. Uh, so it's... Weird. So it's it seems like a fucking rave party gone terribly yeah, right or wrong. I think it's a, like a <clears throat> dance rehearsal, and they have the sangria, but the sangria is laced with something. Yeah. And then everyone gets high and strange. You guys have talked about this movie, and I've seen a lot of people on Letterbox, especially talking about this movie. That sounds like a Letterbox fucking and movie. I'm just like, I don't know anything about this. I Neither should I, I should I go in blind? Yes. Yeah, probably. For the cum show of what I've the been only reason I saw this, I, got, I know that guy's name is because of the the cum movie. What's uh, the cum movie? That could. It be was anything. like it was called Love. It was like a super hypersexual movie. Oh, like the poster was yeah. like a dick coming. Uh, well, the poster on on Letterbox is two mouths kissing. But uh, okay, that's not a dick coming at all. That's boring. I think like that, that was like the poster they premiered like a, a, a when I first showed it or probably. something. Mm. Um, but. Yeah, uh, Triple Frontier, I am looking up right now. It is a Netflix film, mm-hmm. a great proprietor of entertainment. It's got, got Charlie Hunnam. Oscar Isaac. And Ben Affleck. The boys are back. Wow. Oh, boy. I don't know the plot of this movie at all. I just saw the stats. Neither do I. <laughs> I'm looking at this. <laughs> it was like, oh, hell yeah. Oh, someone else very good is in this. Um, Former Special Forces operatives reunite to plan a heist in a separate, a sparsely populated multi-border zone of South Africa for the first time in their prestigious careers. These unsung uh, heroes undertake the dangerous mission for themselves instead uh, of the country. This sounds bad. Yeah, sounds boring. Pedro sounds, Pascal, he's also in this. He's great. Uh, this sounds like uh, this sounds like an early of the year movie that a lot of troops and patriots this would watch. Like a movie Ben Affleck would direct. Yes, it does sound <laughs> like that. He is not. He is not director of this. You yeah, know what? I'll say it. I'm happy that Ben Affleck can just be sad and smoke a cigarette again. Are you? Is he officially out? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's officially out. Did he get out, out. of the contract? He yeah, got he's out, out of this he contract. He asked for his release. He he's got like, that really I'm big out. tattoo on his back, and he's like, I'm out. <laughs> Good for him. When did this yeah. happen? Was this late last year? Uh, It was announced officially, I think, early this year that he really? was out. Really? I now. missed that completely. Because he kept being like, he kept going like on oh, like no nah, I'm probably out. I was like you know what I love the fans I'm back it but he would do that like in front of like big crowds because like he knew you gotta like, work them exactly uh-huh. but yeah he's out they're gonna cast a new Batman nice yeah and you know Chris who, Pratt you know who I actually want to be Batman who Robert Pattinson that would be hilarious That'd be all right. I think he would be great because ideally I would want John Cho but that's not going to happen that'd be awesome that would be amazing anyway no, Triple Frontier Robert looks Pattinson. bad yeah. or it sounds boring, boring. Oscar Isaac's in it uh, you yeah. know what you can get a paycheck and <laughs> show this is, this is the, the story of what he did as an officer before he went into the shimmer in an island oh, man. <laughs> oh right yeah that's what this is um, so Gloria that, Bell that means Ben Affleck went into the shimmer and he's dead 
I love that is true. <laughs> he was the guy they cut open. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> he was full of cigarettes and, <laughs> and steak. That old boss thing. They got from his friend Matt Damon. Exactly. Oh man, it all comes together. Gloria Bell. I forgot this movie was a thing that what was coming this? out. So this the, is. Uh, the, what's her name? Oh my god. Julianne Moore. Julianne Moore. Yes. <laughs> oh. It looks like a. Julianne Moore. Julianne Moore. A nice movie. Slightly older woman rom com. Having a good time. time. And, and it has the guy from Transformers in it, and she's dating the guy from Transformers. I think of him as the guy from The Big Lebowski. Oh. <laughs> the guy from Godzilla, who played uh, Ebert, the Ebert stand in, the assistant to the I mayor. I have no idea who we're talking about. <laughs> uh, I'm let's, so go through, let's go through John Totoro's. Uh, yeah. Oh, John. Okay. Yeah, now there you go. <laughs> Cars 2. He was in that. Oh, yeah, he played the, the, the guy in Secret Window. The guy who was oh, in Johnny Depp's Imagination. Yes, yes. I mean, the real person. That's not the twist ending. I haven't thought about that movie in forever. That, what a fucking movie that was. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. It's by the same director. It looks fun. It it's looks the good. the same I think, director who directed A Fantastic Woman. Yeah, I think you may be interested if you saw the trailer. It's really just like Julianne Moore is like feeling herself. It's like, ah, oh, Julianne Moore going on an adventure. Uh, you know. That's all I've wanted, really. So yeah, um, yeah, it looks it looks good. Um, mm -hmm. I forgot it was coming out until, and I forgot what it was until I saw the name. I was like, oh yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And I, I think again, it helps that they just put Gloria for the trailers. Like, oh, that helps me remember it. Us is coming out this March. Yes. This is a big one, oh, big boy. big one. This um, is, this is the first like big horror movie. Yes, and it's on. So. I'm trying to temper my expectations Same. because I, I think have it's... not seen any more trailers since that original one. Right, so I'm me either. Very happy. But I, th I don't and know I if I have either. And I wasn't too hyped after that trailer. Like, like... I've seen some like TV stuff, so because yeah. like you can't avoid that. But I've not and, like. And I don't want to be this guy's like the fucking critics, man. You can't trust them. Uh, but I just feel like it's very. They like Captain Marvel. What a fucking. They're like the tarred. wrestling movie. What the fuck is this bullshit? <laughs> no, but like I think it's very easy to walk in to the next movie. Uh, you know, and just be like, oh, fuck, it was incredible. Um, because there's so much expectations, like, for mm -hmm. his next thing. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited. Uh, we'll see how it goes. He's clearly a not... Family, uh, they go on vacation. Right, they go on vacation. Another family that looks exactly like yes. outside, and things get crazy. Something about scissors, it's probably symbolic for something, because it... Jordan Peele actually thinks when he writes movies. Right. It feels like <laughs> fantastic. The, the scissors feels like uh, the promo for Suspiria when they just had all the pictures of those hooks ooh, everywhere. Ooh, and so it's the, like when, when Luca Guadagnino Nino was like, you guys are going to lose your fucking shit when you see what these are for. It's like, I don't want to know what these scissors are for, but I do want to know what these scissors <laughs> are for. I think my favorite thing is that I know Jordan Peele is a director who's not afraid to be fucking weird mm -hmm. and use sci-fi. Obviously he's producing The Twilight Zone, which doesn't look great. Great. From I think it looks interesting from those trailers. Yeah. But I like the cast they've got. I like the cast, but it looks very much like a CBS mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like how it's shot, but that's just me. Um, but yeah, us. I'm I'm super excited. I hope. Same. Yeah, really excited. It's like a hard turn. Oh there. man, Dumbo. Dumbo. You know More what like though? Dumbo. Eva Green is back. You know what? She's I'm, back. Hell yeah. She's, she's God good. bless. <laughs> Jesus, but this is a PG movie, so damn it, damn it. <laughs> we aren't gonna get a bonkers Eva Green sex yeah. scene in Dumbo. <laughs> Gus, let's not get crazy here. We don't know. We should work. He's still directing this, but yeah, I don't care about the Dumbo mm, movie, the original nah. one, and this sad is, movie. This is another live action Disney movie, yeah. and worst yet, it's directed by modern day Tim Burton. Yeah, yeah the but worst it's, iteration of Tim. It's Burton, weird, but it, it feels like we were at a point. There was a, certainly a point where Tim Burton was just cashing checks. You know, he was just making, he was just coming for the crowd. But now I feel like he's at a point where like he's reflected on the fact like his life and like what he's done and I who he know. is. I don't know, man. Like he seems like a sad, disheveled man now. In a way that well, what a better time exactly. to make a Dumbo movie. It really movie does. <laughs> when you're just really um, sad, and it's not obnoxious in the way that it was like he's just like. 
oversaturating the, like the saturation on the color, just brightest yeah. all the way, just uh-huh. go all the fucking way. And this one's like, I don't know, it seems a little metered, but who it's knows? It's no Miss Pentagram school for peculiar youth. Oh, I forgot that cap, and never mind. I <laughs> yep. take Hold everything on. back. I take everything back. Never mind. I don't know. This is Tim Burton going back to his roots. He's doing another circus. That's right, movie, working and Michael Keaton. And he's got Danny DeVito back in the exact same role that he played in Big Fish. Mm. I like Michael Keaton. He's in this. Mm. Eva Green also in it, mm. which is great. Probably not gonna whip her titties out. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. um, is there a small mouse in this movie? Probably. Are there uh, racist crows in this movie? There better be, otherwise yeah. I'll be pissed. Pink <laughs> elephants? They're on parade. I don't know if you've heard about it. That's that's that's, that's yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm moderately curious about this one. I have no expectations, but. The concept sounds like dumb and stupid enough. Like fucking somebody remake this Tim Burton. God no, it's a giant elephant. It's finally the Dumbo remake we've all been clamoring. I don't think for. this movie's gonna do well. What? Yeah, no, probably not. I don't think so. Like Dumbo is not the hottest property. No, no like no, especially like it's coming out so close to Aladdin too. When's Aladdin? Uh, end of May. Man, that's a bummer. Which had its first official. I haven't seen anything from that. That, that trailer looks so. People said, like, it looks better than the first one. No, which... it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. But it, the Maybe same I'm direct, an asshole. Same but... director as our favorite movie, That's King true. Arthur, Legend of the Soul. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a get for that guy. Yeah, no, that trailer looks <clears throat> I haven't seen it. It's awful. It I don't does. think I it, There is a split second shot of a giant bird, though. So I'm hoping that once Jafar becomes a big wizard man, he just makes Iago huge. Who's playing Jafar? Some oh, guy. fuck. I looked at it, but I don't remember. Like, I don't really care. Because like, I know, like, <laughs> I'm not going to come over here and be like, oh, listen, make me get mad at you. Like, I'm yeah. not going to, like, come on. I'm done. Like, I don't need to go. Oh. I know it's not gonna be for me. Changed the poster on Letterbox. So we'll have to all look at that in a little bit. What yeah. What if I told you um, that uh, this movie will probably be very not only bad but problematic? Probably. What if I told you it's also gonna make a fuck ton of money? What, what, people seem to not be very on board. Ah, I don't believe but, it. But like, I it felt depends the, who you're talking. I to. felt the same way during. Beauty and the Beast, though, and that made a billion dollars. Yeah, and do- so it is and weird. Aladdin is huge. Yes, People Aladdin's Aladdin. fucking big. I don't, I don't think I've seen Aladdin. Oh, I love Aladdin. It's it's, it's, it's one of my favorites. Again, Disney movies. I didn't watch Disney movies growing up. Me either, because my parents <clears throat> hated musicals. It's very, it's very colorful. It's really good. Oh yeah, I'd love to watch it. Gilbert I, I definitely want to watch it because I know I'm going to see this in theaters. Right. Um, so I definitely gonna watch that. So mm, well, you guys can go. Watch I have that. it. I have it on VHS, so we can. Let's go to our <laughs> friend Greg's house because he has a that CRT. Is... Uh, I have a VCR in my trunk right now. What? Let's, <laughs> let's watch it right now and record a commentary right now. Of Aladdin. So yeah, that's March. Um, and some stuff about Aladdin. It does really feel like that sending Dumbo to die, huh? That's yeah. fine. Yeah, I'm fine yeah. with that. Remember the Nutcracker? Ooh. No. Three rounds. <laughs> that, movie that movie came about to die, didn't it? <laughs> that movie sucked. How much money did that movie make? Let's find out. Two dollars. Sixteen Well, it, it made fucking twenty dollars off of my stupid ass. <laughs> so oh, who's the boy. real? The, oh, the four rounds. Apologies. Mm-hmm. That record on the four rounds. <coughs> movie of the year. Oh, man. I mean, it's very important that I know this. Kira Knight. No, I feel bad because most. every time Disney An makes their new like for... live action, like, big thing like Nutcracker and The Wrinkle in Time people are like I don't give a shit and then they remake something and people hate holy it holy shit they did 54 million in the United States that is bad that's very bad that's, oh, that's, who signed off on that thing what an idiot anyway uh, Disney the, the biggest company in the world Jeff. more like Dumbo <laughs> <laughs> anyways that's the episode of February we did it uh, we get to have a break now woo Oh, fuck me. Um, for like a week, though. Yeah. Maybe you know two. What? I don't be out of town, so that'll That's extend true. it. You'll be fine. Yeah. Um, is there anything coming out in two weeks, actually? In two weeks? Yeah, from this list. Probably not. Probably not. I mean, Captain Marvel is... Uh, it's already out. The perfect film. <laughs> uh, Man, Dumbo... Great. That means Dumbo is like in two weeks, then. If it's in so. March. Yeah. Because yeah. Us is like... 
Dumbo's, this week. Dumbo's yeah. like the last. Yeah, I think Dumbo's the last. Yeah. Uh, the okay. Because like March, March is like has a few good things. Then I think in April like stuff starts really coming out. Yeah. Oh, March is have like one. I guess Captain Marvel's the big one here, yeah. right? Yeah. But April has. And us is gonna April's murder. April's pretty stacked. Yeah. Shout out to us. That movie's gonna kill it. I hope so. I'm so yeah. excited. Well, Good I mean, it them. is gonna kill it. I'm just like regardless, it's gonna make a lot of money. But yeah, from it's our taste. I guess <laughs> that's what really matters. The most Ryan, important. Yes, exactly. Opinions. Ryan, where can people find you online? They can find me online at Mr. Pip Official. Mr. Pip Official. Very when excited was, about when Orange I Coke. When I was sick, I tweeted, I DM at <laughs> the Coke. I was like, how do I be a, a, a sponsor to Mr. Pibb? And then two days later, they're like, they just sent me a link to their career. You said page. this yeah, you last did. episode. Yeah, you did. Oh, I did. I was, <laughs> I'm, I was still sick, and I don't remember. Let's, I'm good now, though. Still does not work for the Coca-Cola company. No. Um, Although I will, I have had orange vanilla Coke, yep, and so it's did I. not that great. I think it's good. I like it. It's fine. You know, like it's the most millennial fucking drink I've ever seen in my life. I uh, have not tried it. The yet. official soda of WrestleMania 35. Very excited. Um, Carrie, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at K A R underscore E Lyles, L Y L E S. And you can find me at J Cruz Alvarez 26. If you have the time and you listen to this podcast and you enjoy it, please, please, please review the show on iTunes. It would mean a lot. But until then, the, the next one will probably be a week late. We'll see. I don't even know the schedule. This guy, you know, I feel like we have a rhythm. Not a solid date. But, like, you know, it's, it's about, like, the we weather a, we is, a like, gist. temperature. Yeah, we have a vibe. Yeah. yeah. So until then, we will see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>